Paul Monica from CNN Business joins us now. And Paul, we're talking Tesla today, and Tesla stock continues to struggle in recent weeks. Now down another four and a half percent today to about 150 bucks a share. As recently as it looks like September 20th, so about three months ago, it was still trading over $300 a share. What's been the catalyst behind this 50% decline since late September? Yeah, it's a stunning decline. I mean, the 52-week high was uh, more than 400. You know, now we're at a 52-week uh, low, a multi-year low, in fact. I-, I think there are a variety of factors. I mean, one, obviously, there are concerns about the just the health of the global economy and whether or not people are going to keep spending on pricey electric cars. and all the competition that's coming into this market as well. You know, Tesla was a pioneer and a leader, but, you know, now pretty much every global auto giant has an electric vehicle product, often cheaper. But that's probably not the main issue. I think what's happening is that investors are very upset about the fact that Musk keeps selling Tesla stock to try and prop up his new toy, that little blue bird named Twitter, and... In the process, he may be alienating a lot of possible prospective Tesla buyers because his behavior on Twitter is, uh, let's be honest, immature. And uh, what I'd be remiss if I didn't say that what he has done with colleague CNN's uh, Donio Sullivan in suspending his account because he was critical uh, of him, uh, you know, is a travesty. So, you know, I had to get that out there. Paul, when, when we look at the demand side of the equation, I poked around Tesla's website this morning, and I'm not the only person who, who did this. They're now offering $3,750 credits on Model 3s and Model Ys if mm-hmm. you take delivery before the end of December, which is something I've never seen from them. They've always had pricing power, at least in the U.S. And I, I'm starting to wonder just how big the demand issue is there because clearly you're not doing this if you have, you know, if your inventory is moving. And Tesla is a company that's built on the idea that, hey, it's still going to grow, you know, rapidly. Our number of cars we're going to sell is going to grow, you know, 30 to 50 percent a year. And, you know, it'll be more than just a car company. It it seems like that's in danger of being punctured as a a story about Tesla now. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's interesting. You noted that it's the uh, the Model 3 and the Model Y, which are the two less expensive versions of some of their other products to begin with. I don't think you probably face as much of an issue with the higher end Model S and Model X. And there were a lot of early adopters, particularly people on the coast, that you know really loved those vehicles and have bought them and have sworn by them. But Tesla, in order to justify its market valuation, which is still pretty high even after this 50% drop, they have to be not just a luxury car company for coastal elites with money. They have to go mainstream. And if people are not looking to buy the Model 3 and the Model Y, which are already cheaper, and they need to discount, that's potentially a problem. I think the market recognizes that. So it's, it's not just about Musk and Twitter. You're right. There are definitely some issues with fundamentals that Wall Street has woken up to. When we look at the the outlook for Tesla, you mentioned kind of valuation, and and again, depending on the metric that you're looking at, you know Tesla's trading 46 times earning. Most of its competitors, you know, established competitors, are anywhere from five to seven x earnings. Tesla's trading six x sales. Most of its competitors are 0.3 to 0.5 x sales. Obviously, the margins have been higher at Tesla, but if you're now having to discount your products by six, eight, ten percent, you eat into those margins quickly. There's still a long way for this thing to go down to get in line with other competitors from a valuation standpoint. Exactly. I, I, I think there, there are a couple important factors there. I mean, to be fair to Tesla and some of the Tesla ticket fans, Musk apologizers, it's always going to have a bit of a premium because yeah. of there is a sexier growth story with Tesla than there is with GM, with Ford, with Toyota, with Volkswagen. That's without question, but the valuations, the multiples for those traditional auto companies probably should come up a little bit to be closer to Tesla. And you're Mm. right that Tesla needs to come down. It's, I think, in some respects, very analogous to Amazon. Amazon obviously still trades at a premium to Walmart, but it's not nearly as wide as it was 
in the late 90s, early 2000s, sure. when uh, Amazon was in the beginning stages of e-commerce and everyone was you know, infatuated by what the growth potential would be. Eventually, a company in that dynamic industry is going to mature and the valuation is going to have to reflect that. Yeah, yeah, it seems that uh, that, that would be expected here. Paul, appreciate you joining us. Uh, thank you so much for the time and have a great weekend. 